This video is made in collaboration with Andrewism. Check out his new video after this on even more solar punk solutions using the link in the description. The world is falling apart at least according to the headlines in mainstream media. Code red for humanity. Nuclear war. At our global climate crisis. Right now, it's hard not to feel like we are on the verge of an apocalypse. But what if we imagined something different? What if we imagined worlds where nature, humanity, and technology not only coexist, but thrive together? Worlds that are rich with the greens and blues of abundance. Utopias? Maybe but certainly utopia is worth striving for. This is what solar punk is all about, a burgeoning genre of art and a movement that casts off the dystopian, technology-heavy futurism of cyberpunk and instead tries to build a world wherein people not only live well, but also live well with nature. Solar punk is an exercise in imagination, but it is also a call to action. There are very real solar punk solutions that already exist or are currently feasible that can start to bring about a solar punk future today. And today we'll look at the viability of some of these solutions and answer the question, how can we build a solar punk future right now? Before we dive into the promising tools that might aid our quest for a solar punk world, we first need to understand the role of technology in the solar punk community. As we will soon see, technology doesn't exist in a vacuum. Just because your community uses an electric tram or slaps some solar panels on their roofs doesn't mean they're solar punk. Yes, it's a step in the right direction, but employing technologies doesn't automatically make you solar punk. Technologies depend on context. Solar panels under an imperialist fascist state do nothing to change the destructive and exploitative relationship with the planet and other humans. Plundering the imperial periphery to build electric batteries is not solar punk. As one Reddit user writes, solar punk without the abolition of capitalism is just greenwashed cyberpunk. So solar punk technologies and solutions should be seen as just one part of a much broader struggle to do away with capitalism and employ more ecological and ethical ways of being. So melding solar punk with political tendencies like eco-anarchism and eco-socialism is essential to actually realizing those visions in the real world. In addition, solar punk is neither always low tech nor is it always high tech. The worlds of solar punk envision technologies applied in appropriate situations in order to foster harmony between people and their environment. The application of these technologies can be diverse. In one town, this could mean passive cooling housing, while in another, it could mean communal living decked out with solar panels. It could mean mechanized apple pickers, or it could mean shovels and hands in the dirt, or it could mean both at the same time. What matters is that those solutions work to strengthen the relationship between communities and the land around them, as well as lessen the work needed to live a comfortable life. So with that said, what exactly would some of these technologies look like? Drive out into the high desert surrounding Taos, New Mexico, and you'll find beautifully unique houses that look as if they were crafted by the elements. These are earthships, dwellings that are the brainchild of architect Michael Reynolds, who in the 1970s sought to build a completely off-grid house that could withstand the extreme cold and heat of New Mexico. Earthship design principles focus on core tenets like passive heating and cooling, using recycled and local materials, and fostering self-reliance through integrated greenhouse gardens. And all of these methods are implemented in ways that look right out of a solar punk drawing. The foundation of an earthship, for example, is built with recycled tires stacked on top of each other with dirt tightly packed into them. This not only provides structure, but as earthship dwellers like to say, it acts as a battery. The sheer mass of an earthship's walls soak in the warmth of sunlight during the day, which the roof is perfectly angled to let in the right amount, and then the wall slowly emits that collected heat out into the room during the cold of the night. As a result, some earthship owners claim to not need any external heating sources. The earthship is built around living with and embracing the natural world. 
It does so with technologies that are tangible and readily available. It uses other people's trash, like old tires and glass bottles, and the dirt around them to build something that's appealing and comfortable. And it does this in a way that ties people to the land. But to live in an Earthship is not some Eden. There are drawbacks. For one, recycled tires do eventually break down, releasing toxic gases into the air. Reynolds and Earthship builders claim that plastering the walls around the tires protects homeowners from this off-gassing. But other builders claim that you would have to be constantly sealing up cracks to have peace of mind. And claims of independence from the water grid through rainwater collection are dubious in desert climates like Taos. And if you're hoping to heat your house through sunlight in an Earthship in a cloudy area, think again. While Earthships certainly aren't perfect, they offer up promising ideas of how to integrate nature into everyday living. They are a solar punk answer to the question, how can we live comfortably with the natural world? They won't work everywhere, but individual pieces of them can be integrated into housing anywhere. Imagine homes using passive heating and cooling systems so they don't have to run the air conditioning or heating all the time. Imagine building gardens within a house. Imagine incorporating filtered rainwater into our plumbing. And imagine building a house with as many local and recycled materials as possible. The Earthship shows us that there are already ways to live well and lightly on the land right now. And it does so in a way that melds low tech and high tech ideas into a beautiful structure. This is solar punk, finding the appropriate technologies to build aesthetically stimulating and livable dwellings that tie us tightly with the landscape. Along the Hudson River in New York, Sam Merritt runs a zero carbon shipping company. No, he doesn't run a fleet of electric trucks, nor does he bike. Merritt ships local goods up and down the Hudson River by sailboat. That's right, in the age of massive gas-powered cargo ships making globe-spanning trips, Merritt has created a fossil fuel-free cargo company based on sailing. One that is at the whims of the weather and the seasons, but makes the buyer appreciate the ebbs and flows of the natural world around them. This epitomizes a solar punk future. Solarpunk envisions a world in which the technologies we use help us to appreciate and tune into the rhythms of the planet. And sailing in the 21st century has the potential of making that happen. Merit shows us that it's already feasible to do on a small scale. And when considering that sails and ropes for ships could support a thriving hemp farming operation that sequesters thousands of tons of carbon with each crop, sailing cargo locally is an appealing possibility. But sailing in the 21st century runs the gamut of low-tech rigs like Merit's schooner to futuristic technologies that are beginning to see their first real-world tests. Right now, engineers and cargo companies are in the midst of wrestling with the polluting reality of international cargo and are on the hunt for high-tech solutions for big shipping. While Solarpunk emphasizes the local, it can still embrace global travel and transport with emerging technologies, like retrofitting cargo ships with column-like sails that reduce fuel use by possibly as much as 30%, or future-thinking cargo ships with retracting rigid sails. A solarpunk future that involves international cargo recognizes the need for these high-tech sailing solutions because they are appropriate for their high seas context. But what's important is that these high-tech cargo ships are not viewed as a silver bullet. In a regional or local setting, hemp sails and schooners are a much more suitable and nature-reliant solution. So while a solar punk future might envision rigid sail cargo ships traversing the open ocean to facilitate a thriving hemp trade between continents, a smaller canvas sailboat might bring those goods the last mile to markets. But at this point, you might be thinking, wait, wouldn't sailing mean that there'll be delays? Won't everything take a long time to get to me? To that, I would say that solar punk does not prioritize Amazon Prime-like convenience. That kind of convenience is something people in the Imperial core will have to learn to do without. It comes at the cost of the planet and the people forced to work grueling conditions and hours to get that package to your front door in one day. 
Solar Punk envisions a world wherein we don't have to crush people and the planet in order to find comfort in our lives. So yes, things might be a bit slower, but I would gladly slow down my life if it meant that my community and my surroundings thrived. Although Earth ships and sailing cargo do exist in this world, they aren't prevalent. Looking around, I usually see the plumes of smoke rising from cargo ships, not the undulating waves of a sail. And I see concrete buildings instead of earth-packed dwellings. So what's holding us back? There is no simple answer. There are a huge host of reasons, but when it comes to these beautiful solar punk worlds that artists around the world have begun to render, I can't help but think about, you guessed it, capitalism. The profit-centered global economy we've built has driven us to create technologies that, for the most part, function to expand margins and make more money for the capitalist class. Ideas and inventions that can't compete in the market, regardless of whether they are zero carbon or build community health, are pushed to the margins. Merit's sailboat cargo company is a novelty because it can't compete with the monopoly of Amazon Prime or industrial shipping companies like Maersk. Solarpunk dares us to dream of a world outside of capitalism because even though these technologies do exist right now under capitalism, they are not widespread or quote unquote successful. The labor required to ram hundreds of tires full of dirt for an earth ship, for example, would bleed someone's bank account dry, while the wind relies nature of a sailboat means that it can't provide the regimented convenience of one day shipping. Combining low and high tech solutions, Solarpunk demands a future built not on profit, but instead on community and a strong relationship with the natural world. So instead of focusing on technologies that make the most profit, Solarpunk urges us to seek out ideas and tools that deepen our interpersonal relationships as well as our ties to the earth beneath our feet. If you want to learn about even more tools that we can use right now to forge a solar punk world, head over to Andrewism's YouTube channel and check out his newest video. And while you're there, make sure to watch some of his other amazing pieces like the one about anti-work or his video about why imagination is so vital. You really can't go wrong on his channel, so definitely make sure to take the time to check out the link to his channel in the description. Unfortunately, videos like these, while very important, do terribly with the YouTube algorithm and sponsors don't want to touch them. But there is a way you can help. Becoming an OCC Patreon supporter helps our changing climate stay afloat and independent. As an OCC patron, you'll not only gain early access to videos, but also special behind the scenes updates and a members only Discord channel. In addition, each month my supporters vote on an environmental group that I then donate a portion of my monthly revenue to. Patreon supporters are the financial backbone of the Our Changing Climate operation. Without them, I wouldn't be able to take creative risks and dive into difficult topics. So if you want to help keep this channel alive or are feeling generous, head over over to patreon.com slash rchangingclimate or use the link in the description and become an OCC patron. If you're not interested or aren't financially able to, then no worries. You can help the channel out by subscribing, liking the video, and commenting. I hope you all enjoyed the video and I will see you in two weeks.